Hey, Grace. Hi, Professor. How are you? Pretty good. How was your weekend? Pretty good. Did you have a good Thanksgiving break? Yeah. What Shot did you do? Turkeys. How many? A few. A few? Maybe a little bit over my limit, but just don't tell the cops. Okay, cool. I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. I'm late, I'm late. I'm going to introduce you guys to DNA transcription. Jose, you are late again. I'm sorry. It's really my fault that I'm late to class. I feel like I need to wake up earlier. Actually, this class starts way too early. I think my professor just needs to make this class start like, I don't know, like at 1 p.m., maybe 5, when I'm awake. It's all his fault. I don't really like that kid. I don't like his taste for clothes. I don't like his beanie. And he's always late for my class. I'm not going to let him pass this class. Pocket, pocket. Oh, there we go. So, why are the transcription factors written on a certain motif, such as cutout box here? You're able to sample, or we can say, start to find. It was homework. Wish, I wish you would remind us that we had homework due today. God, I feel so dumb. I bet the beanie guy definitely forgot to do the homework again. He's going to fail the class. Uh, maybe if I can, maybe can just pull it out right now. Chris, now, did you do the homework? The DNA yes, I got you. D Sweet, thanks. So the blue region is the R region. Be quiet there. I'm sorry, professor. So, today we are going to talk about DNA transcription. Here, I have two DNA strands. The plus strand and the minus strand. The region labeled in red is the prom promoter region, and the downstream of that is the RNA coding region. Next to it is a termination site. So, for the transcriptions to start, first we need transcription factors, which is labeled, which is represented by these little spheres. So, the transcription factors they are able to recognize specific DNA sequence. For example, the Tata box. And after they recognize the DNA sequence, they will be able to bind to the specific DNA sequence. And also, the interactions between different transcription factors will start to be generated. And after we have all the different types of transcription factors ready, they will, they will form a bubble, which is called the, R, the transcription bubble. And uh, after the transcription bubble is docked onto the promoter region, the transcription will start. So the transcription bubble will move along the DNA strand, and at the same time, mRNA, which is labeled in black here, will be synthesized. Once the transcription bubble moved all, like along the strand all the way to the termination site, they will be released. By that time, you will have a complete mRNA molecule. And uh, this mRNA strand will be exported out, outside to the um, to the outside of the nuclei for translation. Cool. All right, almost done with this homework. Um, let's see. Hey, Chris, can you explain this to me real fast? Yeah. Okay. So phenotype it equals genotype plus environment. So phenotype is dependent on the genotype plus environment and a few other stuff. Okay, uh, can you also tell me, like, something to do with, uh, primers in here? You guys should be really pay attention on the lecture. Okay. okay, now we finished the transcription. Let's look at, take a look at the DNA double-stranded break repair. Alright, we finished the DNA transcription. Now we're going to move on to the double-stranded break repair. In general, there are two major ways for the double-stranded repair to occur. The first one is called non-homologous end joining, and the second one is called homologous recognition. 
Now let's look at, take a look at the first one. So in the first pathway, after you have a double-stranded break, the DNA tends to repair it by themselves without the need of a template. However, this pathway is error-prone. What it means is, after the DNA fix itself, it's very often to see mutations occur. Could either be deletions, insertions, Anyway, it's not ideal. In the second pathway, the homologous recombination, which happens more frequently in higher eukaryotes, it requires a DNA template. So after the DNA break, they use this template as a reference to repair the place where the break occurred. And uh, after some complicated um, biological pathways or events, you get your break repaired. And also you have your um, reference DNA sequence. So it's all good. However, the non-homologous end joining can also be powerful for scientists to serve their specific purpose. For example, people are studying um, genes and they want the gene to be silent, basically they can just use non-homologous end joining to um, build a mutation inside the gene and disrupt its expression. As a result, the gene will be silent. Alright, sweet, finished my homework. Alright guys, that's it for today. And don't forget to leave your journal before you walk out of this room. Oh, thanks Chris, man. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, Robert. Oh, you really saved my butt today. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ha! Gave him the wrong answers. Little loser. Ooh. I feel kind of bad. I guess Santa's gonna give me coal this year. Oh, well. Alright, it's time to grade some homework. Hmm, let's look at this guy, Chris. Mm hmm. Mm, good job. I'm going to give this guy a name. Plus plus. Right. Oh, it's the beanie guy's homework. Let's see how he did. Yes, he failed. 